Hi, I'm Cliff, N4CCB. As a QRP evangelist, I'm here to speak truth to power, or truth about power. I'm going to explain one of the most fundamentally misunderstood concepts in ham radio, and that is the relationship between transmitted power and received signal strength. I'm going to show you an audio example of how doubling or even quadrupling your power makes very little difference. I might even show you how to ruin the day of a man with a 1500 watt amplifier. Let's get started. The first thing you should know is that the perceived loudness of a signal isn't linear. In other words, if we're sitting next to each other and I'm transmitting 5 watts and you're transmitting 100 watts, the ham who's receiving our signals isn't hearing your signal 20 times louder than mine. In fact, a 100 watt signal is only about 2 S units stronger than a 5 watt signal. Now, do you think 2 S units is a huge difference? Not always. All right, before people start throwing things at their monitors, 2 S units is not always a huge difference, but it can be a significant difference. If the receiving station that's listening to you is having trouble hearing you, well then bumping up your signal by about 2 S units is gonna increase your signal above his noise floor, and you're gonna be able to make the contact. And that's the ultimate significant difference, completing the QSO or not. On the other hand, if you're transmitting 100 watts and your signal's clearly readable, pumping out 1500 watts, two more S units, doesn't make a significant difference. The truth is, the only time it makes sense to use an amplifier is when the receiving station's having a hard time hearing you. A lot of hams think that buying a 1500 watt amp is going to make their signal loud. But as you now know, it only makes your signal about 2 S units stronger. And 2 S units isn't the difference between 100 watts and loud. For your signal to be loud with 1500 watts, your signal's got to be very strong at 100 watts. And if your signal's very strong at 100 watts, you don't need to use an amplifier. All right, so here's the easy math behind what I'm telling you. If you double your power, that's a 3 dB increase but it takes 6 dB for the receiving station to register a single S unit increase. In other words, each S unit increase requires a 6 dB change, and to get a 6 dB change, you have to quadruple your power. This chart shows the change in received signal strength relative to the change in power output from 100 watts. As you can see, you have to quadruple your power to get a single S unit increase. The silver lining is that it works the other way too. So you can cut your power by a factor of four and your signal's only one S unit weaker. Cut it back by a factor of four again and now you're down around QRP levels and your signal is only two S units below where it would have been if you were transmitting 100 watts. And that's why QRP works. Knowing this, does it make sense to buy a 500 watt or 600 watt amp? Maybe. As long as you realize that your signal will only be slightly more than one S unit stronger. I'm going to give you three examples of manufacturers trying to pull the wool over our eyes when it comes to output power. The classic 600 watt Ameritron AL811 linear amplifier is marketed with text that says that it quote, gives you plenty of power to bust through QRM exclamation point. Is that true? Does about one S unit let you bust through QRM? No. One S unit is barely noticeable. If you're watching your S meter, you can see one S unit, but you probably can't hear the difference. Let me show you what a one S unit difference actually sounds like. Well, I'll tell you, I have, uh, I have three or four antennas low down, and right, right now what I'm doing is I'm just running wire antennas. I do live right at the top of a canyon, and uh, my weather station has registered 55 mile an hour winds at the house. So. It gets, it gets to blowing up there. It's normally not any more than about 25 miles an hour. Those old uh, trees get to waving back and forth, and the wires get to the rafts as well. But at least they don't come down. I've got them all uh, counterweighted, so they move with the trees. They seem to stay up very well. So one additional S unit is not going to let you bust through QRM. I hate to pick on Ameritron, but let's look at the solid state version of that amp. Now this is the 600 watt amp uh, that the model number is the ALS 606. Its marketing tech says it's only 4 dB down from 1500 watts, less than an S unit. Nobody can hear the difference, exclamation point. Well, now I agree 100%. 
Now what they're trying to say is that it's okay to spend only $2,000 on this lower priced 600 watt amp because your signal will be less than one S unit weaker than 1500 watts and nobody on the receiving end is going to be able to tell that you're only running 600 watts. Hmm, think about that now. If the receiving station can't hear the difference between 600 watts and 1500 watts, and I agree with that, why would Ameritron make many more amplifiers that put out more than 600 watts? I think it's because a lot of hams think that the difference between 600 watts and 1500 watts is huge, and you now know that it's not. All right, one last example, and this time it's from Kenwood. Here's the brochure of the Kenwood TS480. It comes in the standard model, which includes an internal antenna tuner. Now, I have this radio for my car. But you can forego the internal tuner and get a high power version that transmits 200 watts. Their marketing tech says, quote, despite its compact dimensions, it delivers an astonishing punch. 200 watts with a DC 13.8 volt supply. Astonishing punch? It gives you an extra half of an S unit. Now, Ameritron rightly says that nobody can hear a 4 dB difference. Well, this is only a 3 dB difference. Astonishing punch? I love you, Kenwood, but this is just silly. It's this kind of marketing that causes hams to have a false sense of what an amplifier can do. Now, pardon the non sequitur here, but my hair is going away. I can falsely believe that a toupee will make a big difference. And you can falsely believe that spending $6,000 on this amazing Elecraft amplifier will guarantee you a 20 dB over S9 signal report. But it won't. You're going to get two extra S units above whatever your signal would be at 100 watts. So if you're S6 at 100 watts, you're going to be S8 at 1500 watts. And here's the part where I show you how to ruin the day of a man with a 1500 watt amplifier. If you're talking to a ham who's truly registering 20 dB over S9 on your radio, and he's running 1500 watts, you could still carry on that same conversation if he was working QRP. Now let's look at the math to see how that's true. If he's S9 plus 20 dB at 1600 watts, and we're going to use 1600 to make the math easier, cutting his power by a factor of 4, now transmitting 400 watts, will make his signal is going to be S9 plus 14 dB. We took away 6 dB because we cut his uh, signal you know, down. Reducing the power by a factor of 4 again, now 100 watts, puts him at S9 plus 8 dB because we took the 6 dB away. Cut it back to 25 watts, and his signal is now S9 plus 2 dB. Well, that 2 dB is less than a half an S unit, so we're just going to get rid of that to keep the math easy. All right, so 25 watts, and he's at S9. Now, cut it back to 6 watts, and the signal is S8. Reduce it by a factor of 4 again to 1.5 watts, and his signal is S7. Now, is your station's noise floor less than S7? Then you could still hear that guy if he was working QRP. After reducing his signal by a factor of four five times in a row. All right, so there's two takeaways here. Reducing or increasing your power by a factor of four is only a one S unit difference. And as long as your signal is above the noise floor for the receiving station, you can be heard. If you watched my video 2000 miles with a half a watt in voice mode, you saw me do a test with a nice Hammond Oregon where I started at five watts and kept turning my power down while talking to him, ending with a 500 milliwatt. And he could hear me. He could hear every word. Watch this. Right now I'm at 5 watts, and I'm going to continue turning it down. Right now I am at 2.5 watts, 2.5 watts, and I'll turn it down a little further. Now I'm doing 1.5 watts, 1.5, and now 1.0, 1.0, and now one half a watt, 0.5 watts. Uh, can you hear me at all, Harold? Uh, I've heard you at 0.5 watts. 0.5 watts, over. Oh, that's great. 0.5 watts from here to Oregon. I'm uh, near Nashville. That's that seems like magic, right? 2,000 miles on 500 milliwatts. But now that you know the math, you know why it's not magic at all. If propagation is decent like it was that day, and he's hearing me pretty well at 5 watts, reducing my power to 500 milliwatts is less than a 2 S unit decrease. As long as my reduced signal is above his noise floor, he'll hear me. And he did. By the way, the math here also goes for power loss due to poor SWR. If you have horrible SWR and you're only radiating half the original power, that's only a 3 dB decrease, which is, right, half an S unit. 
and you can't hear the difference in half an S unit. As Bill Murray said so well in the movie Meatballs, it just doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter. I tell you, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Okay, let's wrap this up. You know, it sounds like I'm an anti-amplifier activist. I'm not. I'm a QRP activist. You know, I want everybody to know that QRP works and why it works and why we shouldn't be surprised that it works and why life is long enough for QRP and therefore why the QRP school crest features the Latin words satis longa vita, which when translated to English means life is long enough. I'm not, anti <laughs> I'm not anti amplifier, but I am anti ignorance. Don't buy an amplifier expecting it to make your rig sound like a commercial AM broadcast station. It doesn't work that way. Buy an amplifier, Turn it on when the station you're trying to talk to can't hear you. That's the way to use an amplifier. It's only going to give you up to two S units, but those two S units are going to make it possible to have a QSO when you might not otherwise. So you guys with amplifiers, are we okay? Are we good? I hope so. That's it for this video. As always, thanks for watching.